How's it going there? Um, looked over YouTube a little bit, and uh, I started noticing that there haven't really been uh, many, if any, videos on how to actually make uh, reproduction Nintendo games. There's uh, a few of them showing off reproduction games, you know, stuff people have ordered and showing the boards and this, that, and the other, but nothing that really um, uh, gives an idea of, of, of how to make one, where to get started. So I'm going to try to go ahead and, uh, and do that. A little bit. I'm gonna apologize for the editing. Um, I've never really edited a video before. I'm gonna have to do this in multiple parts, so uh, I'm just gonna try to edit them all together, and, and hopefully it'll all fit. Uh, I'll probably just be using Windows Movie Maker, so don't expect any any flashy crap. It's probably just gonna be you know quick cuts and this, that, and the other. So uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, I guess get started. Um, it's gonna be a few things I'm gonna have to skip just because. I can't really show a video. Well, I guess I can, but uh, we'll see how it goes, um, where I end up, so we'll see. Uh, to start off with, this is going to be uh, your basic board that you're going to pull out of a Nintendo game. To get the game out, you are going to need a, um, a special uh, tool. Um, I'm not sure the technical name for it. I think it's just called a game bit. I don't know. It's just one of these little fellas. Uh, just a, a socket that'll fit in, in pretty much any any standard uh, socket driver, but you can see it has that weird star bit on the end, and that's to actually get into the case. These you can find on eBay. I think this one cost me. Um, sorry for the blurry video. This one cost me like three dollars or whatever, and it's supposed to. Uh, they're supposed to wear out eventually, and they will wear out eventually because these things aren't uh, exactly made. Um, aren't exactly made by craftsmen, but uh, the company, not the people. The people who make them are obviously craftsmen. But, you know, I'm not going to get into the names. But uh, it will wear out eventually. I'd probably go ahead and get a couple of them. Uh, when I say wear out eventually, I mean not weeks or months, but maybe after a year, year and a half, it will start to wear out. I've had this one for uh, about two years now, and uh, you can see it's very little wear and tear on it so I mean it still works just fine but for two bucks you know doesn't hurt to have a spare right uh, when you get in the game you're going to find uh, your board this is your just a, a basic uh, board this is out of fighting golf sorry I had to look at it uh, Lee Trevino's fighting golf this is an SL ROM you can see um, oh you can't till I move it down you can see up here once I move my finger, it says, you know, NES, SL ROM. There we go. You can see it now. Probably a little blurry, but you can see it. Um, you are going to want to pay attention to the board type. There are lists out there that tell you what reproductions you can make with which board. It's a too many Google search. It's not that hard to find. Uh, what you're going to need to do is remove the, uh, the Nintendo PROMs off of it. This one has two. You can see uh, the character ROM here and the program ROM here. You're going to want to remove those. Uh, you're going to need a, uh, I use a solder sucker, a solder pullet, and uh, flux. Um, go ahead and bring that around, I guess. The flux I use is just uh, rosin flux by MG Chemicals, right there. Um, I think. Uh, this stuff is, is, is uh, pretty hazardous, so you don't want to leave it somewhere where it could get um, drank or eat or, or ate or uh, anything like that. So I just keep it in a, uh, a little bottle with a needle on it, and then I keep the, uh, the reserve here. Like, this is a very large bottle, and I've been using this for years, and it's still, I'm not sure if you can hear that or not, it is still very full. It, it takes very little to, uh, to get everything started. To, uh, to removing the uh, the chip. And how I do it is, get my solder pull it here, which is just your, your standard vacuum manual solder pull it. Uh, these things, you can see there's tape here. Um, just as a quick tip, these will wear out. These will break, the, the, most of them come with a, with a second tip. Uh, most of the time, this will break before you even get a chance to use a second tip. There is a little retaining clip actually in here that will break it will break there's there's no question about it it will break so go ahead and plan ahead I just put tape over the top here because once that clip goes the actual rod here will just uh, 
and this is pretty hard to work with, it's a pretty small area, the rod here will just shoot right out. So I just put tape here to hold it in, and uh, it works pretty well. You'll have to replace every once in a while, but whatever. You know, I do things right when you can do it cheap and half-assed. Anyway, uh, the back of the board, <clears throat> this is the one I just showed you. What you'll want to do is, I do have a, actually be easier to show this. This is actually for uh, my electronic cigarette. There's no flux in here, but you'll just want to flux just along these pins, just a little bit, just a very, very, very light coating. Um, and that'll get the solder to flow easier, which will let your, your solder pull it work well. And what you do is you'll just, you know, heat up pin by pin. It is a little annoying, but you have to do it one at a time. You'll heat up a pin with your soldering iron. Again, let's use our imagination and pretend this is the soldering iron. You'll heat up the pin, cock your, um, your solder pullet, heat up the solder, place it on there, and give it a suck. And that'll suck the solder out of it so that you can remove the chip. You'll have to do that with every pin for your, for your uh, character and program ROMs. Once you have that removed, I'm sorry if I'm moving fast here. I, I, I'm pretty sure this is all basic stuff. And, uh, pretty much stuff that you you know would expect you have to do. Uh, once you get all that removed, and I had it here a second ago. Here we go. You'll be able to pop your chips out. It'll end up with, again, this is a different type of board. This is a, a TS-ROM. See right up there at the top, TS-ROM. Uh, you can see it comes out pretty clean just using the, uh, the solder pullet. Um, once that is done, you'll be able to program your EEPROMs. I'm not even going to bother doing a video on EEPROM programmers because the one I use is ancient and would pretty much only apply to people that are using uh, a Needham's EMP20. And even then, I'm still not going to do a video even if you, you, you do have one. Um, a lot of the newer programmers uh, are pretty self-explanatory. Even the old, um, I believe for for the, the chips that you'd be doing for Nintendo uh, uh, cartridges, the old uh, uh, Willem um, programmers you see on, on eBay for cheap, those would work also. Uh, they're crap, but I believe they would work long enough to get a few reproductions made if you wanted to. The uh, second step I do for actually making the, uh, the cartridges after uh, I program the EEPROMs is I use my test board. And the test board is basically just, this is my, my TS-ROM test board, it's basically just a board that I've removed the EEPROMs for and then wired in the sockets as you would wire in the EEPROMs so I can, you know, do quick tests, see if anything's wrong before I go through the trouble of actually soldering the, um, the EEPROMs to the board. And all it is is, like I said, just two sockets added and the board is it's just pretty dirty on the back. No, it's not that bad. It doesn't even show up on camera, so I'll just go ahead and say it's clean. But it is actually very dirty on the back, so I just didn't clean up after I got done with the flux. Um, just ran all the wires to where they needed to go. Uh, you can find um, the, the quickest way I found, if I, like if I ever forget or go to a new board I'm not 100% sure of, is just look up uh, 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 NES EEPROM conversion, and that'll, that a couple of those results will be a text file that tells you exactly how to. Uh, wire in your chips and remember the chips are going to count uh, counterclockwise the the pins as you look at them from the dot like say the little dot the marker is up here so it'd be you know one two three four five six blah 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 so it's really not uh, as hard as it as, as people would make it seem. Once you get in a hang-up, you'll be able to knock them out in no time. Like this is, which one is this? Oh, I know what this is. Uh, this is a game I was working on. Um, always cover your EEPROM windows. This is just done real sloppy just to cover them up. But you can see once it's all wired in, it's really not that bad like those wires running all over the place on the on the uh, the test board look bad 
But as you can see, it's really not that bad. All you'll do is you'll lift up a few legs, uh, you know, according to the text file or whatever information you're using. Uh, usually pins one and two, and then uh, 31 and 30, and then 24 on both chips. And then depending on the, on, on the board, also pin uh, 22. Um, that comes and goes. Some, some boards only have uh, one EEPROM. Again, don't always go off of what I'm saying. Look at the, the conversion list and it'll tell you exactly where to wire it. And you can see it's really not that bad. Um, this board is dirty. You'll be able to, yeah, you can see how dirty this one is. I haven't cleaned it yet. But you just wire them in, uh, solder them in, uh, run your flying wires, and you're good. I mean, that's, that's just about all there is to it. There's really not... Uh, Sorry, trying to set that down so it stops moving. It's really not that complicated. You can see it's it's uh, what four wires on the character ROM and then what? Oh, four on the program. It's it's not that. It's not rocket surgery. It's, it's really very easy. And that's a quick um, a quick how-to. I mean, it's if you're a visual person, you just have to see before you start removing stuff and and and. And rawing, that's that's literally all there is to it. There's some boards, like um, uh, you have some like here, like the C in ROM, which is all messy because I'm always having to resolder and and and, uh, and redo the connection. This one, I've actually used this board for several other things. You can see uh, some solder here and uh, some solder on the back here where it shouldn't be in here. This this was used for. Um, a little project I was working on that I finished and decided I didn't want to do it, so I undid it and turned it back to a CN ROM board. But on the CN ROM, you can see there are no. This is my, my test board. There are no extra wires. You literally just pull the the, uh, the Nintendo ROMs out, program your your EEPROMs, and put them in. Done. Very simple. Um, got a couple more test boards here somewhere. Uh, I don't remember where I put them. Sorry, this place is just a nightmare. I'm, I'm an incredibly unorganized person. There we go. We have here SL ROM. Oh, I could have shown you that with this board, huh? But um, standard SL ROM board. Again, Lee Trevino's fighting golf. And this is my SL ROM. Uh, test board that I use to check the EEPROMs just to double check because I I really don't like um, unsoldering and resoldering EEPROMs if I can help it so I'd like to make sure they work right the first time let me see just it is very sloppy but it does work if I was you know making this for a friend or something I would do it a lot cleaner since this is mine I don't mind you know these little loops here and crap like that normally that would piss me off if I was if it was something I was going to sell but uh, so SL ROM test board. And I have test test boards for uh, pretty much every type of, of Nintendo board. Um, here we go. Go ahead and take this, take the EEPROM out of this one, show. And this is the uh, UN ROM. Again, you can see um, it looks like there's a character uh, ROM here. There is not. It's just some extra RAM. It is not. Do not remove these on on. Uh, UN ROM boards. Um, for the UN ROM boards, you literally only have to do one chip. The entire game is kept on one chip. Try to get that back down. There we go. So, I think it's rambling now, but that's a quick, very quick, very, very, very basic for uh, Nintendo um, uh, reproductions. They're, they're, they're really not that hard. Um, actually, they're not, not even that hard. They're not hard at all. I mean, if you have some basic soldering skills and some wire cutters and an EEPROM programmer, you're, you're there. You're done. That's it. That's all there is to it. Um, so I guess that's it. I'll, actually, I don't even need to edit this thing. I rambled way too long, didn't I? I'm sorry. So um, that's pretty much all there is to it. Once you get up, uh, later on, um, actually, give me a second. I will be right back. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to leave the, the computer for a quick second. And I'm back. Uh, there are some other games. Um, 
this is a board that I've, I've cannibalized a lot off of, but this is my, uh, uh, if you see one of my other videos, I have a, another video for Gimmick, uh, the, uh, the Famicom game Gimmick that was never released in the U.S., and the kicker with it is there's uh, extra audio on that that you have to uh, enable to fully enjoy the game. So there's only one board we have in the U.S. that you can use to make that game, and that is the uh, Batman Return of the Joker uh, board. So, this is basically that board. This is the uh, Return of the Joker board. You can see I've already is socketed. This is my test board. This is where I used to test the, the EPROMs and, and my other chips. Um, so I've already I ripped out the um, the EPROM I was using for the character character ROM, and I've, I've probably erased it and used it for something else. But you can see it's uh, Sunsoft. It's upside down, but I'm really too lazy to turn it. But you can see it does say FME7. Actually, no, I'll go ahead and turn it. Screw it. Sunsoft, FME7. And you have to wire in the extra. This is the extra board. You can see I've already pulled pieces off it also. So once you get into it, you can uh, do a little bit more stuff. I believe the plans are out there for this. You can actually find the schematic for this if you wanted to make one. Uh, really not worth it. Uh, they, are, they already do have... A, um, a gimmick uh, U.S. prototype that was found and uh, and uh, by by a friend of mine and uh, dumped and, and reproduced. So you can actually buy that uh, the U.S. version, which is not going to require that extra chip. Uh, you you will be missing a few layers of sound, but nothing big. The game is fully playable, fully enjoyable. Uh, you can get that from. Crap, I don't remember the site. You can find it. Let's look up Gimmick Repro if you want one. But uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Again, I said pretty much it again, which means I'm, I'm hopefully getting close to being done rambling. But you can see there's really not a heck of a lot to it. I mean, there's get board, remove ROMs, add ROMs, wire ROMs, put back in case, plug in Nintendo, enjoy. That's There's really not a heck of a lot to it. So I guess that's uh, it for this thing, I guess, unless I redo it later on with a better camera and a script so I don't ramble so much. But that's pretty much it. That's the really rough, quick and dirty how to make Nintendo reproductions. So uh, there you go. Uh, Y'all take it easy. Later.